There's a reason Oldfield gear from the 1940s still survives in near-perfect condition, while modern synthetics tear, mildew, or lose waterproofing after just a season. Long before nylon ponchos or polyurethane coatings, soldiers in World War II relied on a primitive yet ingenious formula, one that turned ordinary cloth into an impenetrable shield against rain and snow. It was not a factory secret or industrial spray, but a hand-mixed blend of tallow, paraffin and resin that transformed wool, cotton and canvas into water-repelling armour. This field-borne chemistry, rediscovered by collectors and survivalists decades later, represents one of the most enduring forgotten arts of wartime innovation. During the brutal winters of World War II, supply lines were unreliable and replacement gear was rare. Tarps tore, oilcloth cracked, and heavy coats soaked through within days of sleet and mud. In remote posts from the Eastern Front to the Aleutian Islands, soldiers needed a way to waterproof their field blankets and uniforms using what little they had. Military engineers and field craftsmen began blending what was available, animal fat from cooking, paraffin scavenged from candles, and pine resin harvested from trees. When heated together in correct proportions, the result was a waxy, viscous mixture that, when applied hot to cloth, created a flexible coating impervious to water yet breathable enough to prevent rot. Unlike modern synthetics that eventually delaminate, this mixture bonded with the fibres themselves. Once cured, a treated wool blanket or canvas cover could repel rain for entire campaigns. Reports from Allied and Axis units alike describe how improvised greasewax blankets replaced tarps during snowstorms, turning bedrolls into waterproof cocoons and ground cloths into dry shelters. The formula varied slightly by region, but the principle was the same. Media Group, historical images of soldiers mixing waterproofing compounds, survivalists recreating Baobo Seeds waterproofing recipe, side-by-side -side display of regional waterproofing ingredients, stock a distribute. Equally, animal tallow provided softness and flexibility. Paraffin gave structure, and resin locked the coating in place. The preparation was simple, but required patience and steady heat. Soldiers melted tallow and paraffin in roughly equal portions, about one part each, over a low fire, adding small fragments of pine resin until the mixture thickened and emitted a faint wood smoke aroma. Once fully liquid, it was brushed or rubbed onto the cloth while still hot, using rags, sticks, or even the back of a mess tin. When the material cooled, it was reheated near the fire or in the sun to let the mixture fully penetrate the fibres. The result was a darkened, slightly stiffer fabric that shed water effortlessly. To test the waterproofing, a few drops of water were sprinkled over the cloth. If they beaded and rolled off like glass, the job was done. If not, another thin coat was applied. Soldiers often treated both sides of the material for maximum effect, though one heavy layer on the outer surface was usually enough. A properly prepared blanket could serve as a poncho, tent fly or bedroll covering and was sometimes used to line the inside of foxholes to keep sleeping gear dry. Modern survivalists who've recreated this process note that the key is balance. Too much wax makes the fabric brittle, while too much grease leaves it tacky and prone to dust. A mixture of roughly 40% paraffin, 40% tallow, and 20% resin produces the most durable result. 
The strength of the Second World War wax and grease treatment lies in its adaptability. Unlike factory-made waterproofing sprays that rely on synthetic polymers, this mixture binds naturally with fabric fibers. It remains flexible in freezing temperatures and can be reheated and refreshed indefinitely. Soldiers found that even when small abrasions appeared, simply warming the cloth near a campfire remelted the coating, resealing the surface. Another advantage was its scent and texture. The blend of tallow and resin repelled insects and mildew, while the matte finish prevented glare, an essential feature in combat zones where reflections could reveal positions. Modern enthusiasts who restore World War II-era packs, coats and tarps using this recipe often report that the treated material still outperforms expensive outdoor gear. The combination of natural waxes and oils keeps fabric breathable yet watertight, something even modern laminates like Gore-Tex can struggle to maintain under sustained soaking. For those interested in testing the old technique, it can be safely reproduced with basic materials. Melt equal parts paraffin wax and render tallow in a small pot over low heat. Then stir in a smaller portion of powdered pine resin or colophony until dissolved. Apply the warm mixture evenly over canvas, denim or wool using a stiff brush or sponge. Let it soak in, then warm the fabric with a hairdryer or by hanging it near gentle heat. The cloth will darken and stiffen slightly, signalling that the fibres are sealed. This treatment works remarkably well for field tarps, tool rolls, bushcraft smocks and even old army blankets used in camping setups. When combined with proper stitching and seam sealing, it can turn a simple drop cloth into a long-lasting shelter covering. Survivalists often coat the underside of their canvas bedrolls with the formula to keep ground moisture out while leaving the inner layer untreated for comfort. If one aims for historical accuracy, using animal tallow instead of vegetable oils preserves the authentic scent and consistency of the wartime blend. However, those seeking an odourless version can substitute beeswax or soy wax while retaining resin as a binder. This humble formula represents more than just a waterproofing trick. It's a lesson in adaptation. Soldiers didn't wait for better gear. They engineered it. They transformed waste materials into survival tools through chemistry born of necessity. The same mindset that waterproof blankets in 1943 can still help modern adventurers create gear that lasts decades. Whether used to preserve historical reenactment equipment or to craft durable outdoor gear without relying on plastics, the World War II wax and grease method remains a working example of how resourcefulness can outlast technology. Every time a collector or prepper restores an old canvas with this coating, a fragment of that wartime ingenuity comes back to life practical, enduring, and still defying the elements. For more deep dives into forgotten field craft and the survival methods that built history's toughest generations, subscribe to In the Beginning and share this video with those who value real craftsmanship over convenience. The old ways aren't gone. They're waiting to be rediscovered.